everyone, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my studio. Previously, I showed you how to make Quilt As You Go drying mats, which included binding. This version is great if you need a little quick gift or you want to add something to a gift basket that you're making, whether it be for the holiday season or if you're going to a housewarming. I think this would be great to make them a personalized drying mat and tuck a few other housewarming gifts into a basket for somebody. So our base is going to be a simple Dollar Tree drying mat or a drying mat that you pick up anywhere. And I used an Easter fat quarter print. Even though I only used one piece of fabric, you can go ahead and use up your scraps, whether you want to piece it or have some charm squares, or you can even use some of your crumb blocks. Just using one fat quarter or one piece of fabric that'll fit just makes it super quick and easy. And I like that we don't have to worry about putting binding on it at the end. So hang out with me and I'll show you how quick and easy you can make this drying mat. I think if you're an experienced sewer that you can easily do this in about 10 minutes. Because I'm a quilter, or I make a lot of quilted type projects, many of the projects I show require or make it easier to make by using like quilting tools. But today, all we're gonna need is our dish drying mat, some scissors, pins, which will be helpful, but you could probably get away without it, but I really highly suggest some pins, and then some type of fabric to cover our dish drying mat, and of course, a sewing machine. You could do this by hand if you wanted to, sew it up by hand. The material is not that difficult. I think you could easily sew through this. It would just take you that little bit extra of an effort. So the dish drying mat I picked up this time is from the Dollar Tree. This one measures 11 inches by 18 inches or 27 and a half centimeters by 45 centimeters. Now I know I don't always include centimeters, but since it's right on the tag, I can say it. This is 100% polyester but the fabric on the outside does feel like it has a little bit of cotton in it so that's nice that it has that nice feel to it this one is surged around the edge so there's no binding like on the previous one so that's going to make it a little bit easier to stitch through plus the foam is much thinner we don't have to go through all of that extra bulk like in the previous project my dollar tree didn't have these drying mats so i purchased a case of them i believe i bought 12 of them so they were really inexpensive they're only a dollar 25 each so Dollar Tree has the option of you to buy things by a unit or by a case. Sometimes it's one or two items and sometimes it's 30 or 40, depending on what it is. This one happened to be 12. So sometimes you can go to the Dollar Tree and pick up your order and sometimes you have to have it shipped to your house. But if you're lucky enough to find these mats right at your Dollar Tree, then you can pick up a few of them. So if you wanna have your everyday one and then you can have some with holiday fabrics. The mat does have a front and back to it, but it does have a tag, and I'm just going to remove the tag. I don't see that either side is different other than the tag. So this one's a fat quarter, so it's a little bit larger than I need. Now for those of you that aren't familiar with it, fat quarters usually run about 18 inches by 21 inches, give or take. Sometimes they're a little bit bigger, sometimes they're a little bit smaller. But because of the size of our mat, it won't really fit comfortably this way. We could, but I don't want to have to worry about having any, just a small amount of fabric. So I'm going to lay mine this way. I can move my mat around on the fabric, just put it in different places. Now when you buy fat quarters or if you buy fabric off the yardage, there's something that's called a salvage. I don't think you could see it very well, but on the salvage, you'll notice there's this frayed edge and then there's a whole bunch of little dots that go all the way in a row. Sometimes the salvage has the printed fabric like this and sometimes it has words to tell you the name of the fabric line. I don't want to put that into my project. One, it has the little holes in it, and two, the part of the salvage is really tight. There's no stretch or movement to it. It can react differently when you wash it and stuff. We don't use this when we're sewing or quilting unless we're making a salvage project, but that's a whole different thing. If you accidentally get it into your project, it's not that big of a deal, but since I have plenty of room, I'm going to go ahead and avoid using the salvage. You can measure out your fabric and make everything perfect, or you can just lay it down. Since salvage is on the left side, I'm gonna lay this over here to the right. I find for me, it's easier for me to do a project if I leave myself a little bit of a border, a little bit of room for mistakes in case something shifts on me, I wanna make sure I have a little bit of wiggle room. If you wanna put it right up to the edges, and if you're really great at doing the sewing and all of that, then go ahead and do that. 
For my quilters, if you have your rotary cutter, you can just rotary cut all the way around, whether you put your ruler down or just do it by hand. I am just gonna use my scissors this time. I have that little bit of extra room there. If I'm worried about having an edge that kind of goes like this, what I can do is give myself a little extra room down there, and then I'll cut right along the edge of this, and that way I can split the room on both sides when it's all done. And this just gives me a way to draw that, to cut that straight line. Now you can take a pen or a pencil and draw that line right on there, just trace along here remove it and then cut it. But since it's gonna be extra for me, I'm not gonna to worry too much if I have a little bit of a wiggle. It's gonna be on the outside that's going to get cut off after I sew it on anyway, so I won't worry too much. Then cut this end the same way. Now you have extra fabric to start your little scrap collection and make something else. Now if I move my mat, you can see I have a little bit extra. Is it a half an inch? Is it an inch? Is it a quarter inch? It doesn't really matter to me because it's going to get trimmed off afterwards. What I want to do is I want to put my fabric right side up. So I'm looking at the pretty side of my fabric. Make sure you have it ironed the best you can. You can see some of the little creases from when I unpacked the fat quarter. I did spritz it with water and I tried to press them all out and most of them will come out once I stretch it around and I have it sewn down to here. So if you're gonna use starch on it, start your fat quarter first and then cut out your piece. This might sound a little strange, but this is gonna be the side that I wanna be on the top. So I want this to be covered by the fabric. So I'm gonna put the other side down onto the mat like that. So now I'll flip it over, smooth it all out, and I'm gonna put some pins in just to hold it in place when I take it over and sew. I'm gonna be sewing somewhere between a quarter to three eighths of an inch of a seam allowance. I would like to get past the surged edge just to give myself a little bit of room and I'll be sewing it from the other side so it should be pretty easy. And since I'm gonna do it from the other side, I wanna make sure that my pins are in the center away from the sewing area. And they go through the foam really well. It's not hard at all. I'm using a little bit of a longer pin just for me to accommodate that foam. You should be able to use any type of pin you have. And that's gonna keep it from shifting. And then I can see where my edge is along there. So I wanna put a couple up here because I don't use pins very often, but when I do use pins, I tend to overpin. Just because I don't want to worry about anything shifting. So there are all my pins. I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I wanna sew right here along that surged edge. So I'm not even gonna worry about measuring it. Is that a quarter of an inch? Is it a half an inch? I'm gonna put my sewing machine needle in the center and I'm just gonna stitch right along that edge. So whatever it happens to be. As I mentioned, I have my needle in the center position. You can move your needle and put it wherever you'd like. When I turn my sewing machine on, the automatic setting is a 2.4 stitch length. And I think that's gonna be perfectly fine for here going through just a little bit of the foam and maybe if I get off kilter some of the surge seams so I don't want to have too tight of a stitch length. So I'm going to hold the fabric in place just so I know that this doesn't fold under anywhere and I don't want it to move. I have my pins holding it in place in the center areas. Just going to make sure I don't put my hands in the center so I don't stab myself. Just keep aware of what's going on. I'm going to gently guide it with my left hand, but just let the feed dogs do their thing and put it through. And I'll watch, not where my needle is, but I'm going to watch in front of the foot to make sure that this surged area right here is lining up with the little slit that I have in my foot. And that will mean that the needle is going to land right in that spot. You really don't need to watch exactly where your needle is. You need to pay attention more to what's coming into the needle so that it's lined up properly. And when I get to the corner, I'll just slow down. And when I hit the corner, leave my needle down, lift my presser foot, turn it, and then continue on to the next corner. Now, if you wanted to, you could cut this serge seam off and just use a raw edge and go from there. But I'm fine with just using this as my quarter inch seam after I stitch and flip. If it's something I don't like, then I'll know on the next one to change it. Again, needle down. 
Having the needle down saves me a lot of hassle because I know that I'm staying lined up. If my machine didn't have the needle down or I didn't crank the needle down by using the little wheel on the right hand side of your machine, then when I spin my project around, it could move in different areas and you'd have to refine that spot. Then you can have extra little loops of thread stuff down there. By doing this, I don't have to worry about backstitching or cutting any extra threads. It's just all set to go. This is sewing through the foam, no problem. I just have a regular needle. I believe it's a 9014, just a standard one that I have in there. It's not a brand new needle, so it is probably a little bit dull and it's still going through the foam, no problem. I just reached my last corner. I'm coming down the long stretch where I had started the project. And I wanna leave an opening three to five inches, whatever works for you, because I'm gonna use that to turn everything right side out. So I need to have a place to do that. So I usually do about the width of my fingers. It just makes it easy to get your hand in there. This is a project that's easy to turn. And if you leave a larger opening, it's okay. You can put a pin in to remind yourself of where to stop, or you can just eyeball it. Now back stitch. So there's my stitch mat. There's my little bit of an opening that I left to turn everything right side out. So to start off with, I'm gonna remove my pins. And now I wanna trim off the extra fabric. I'm gonna trim it right even to the edge of the drying mat. This is going to be on the inside, so it doesn't really matter how perfect it is. I just want to trim it away. As you can see, oh, if you can see I've got all these rough edges, it's going to be fine. This is where the benefit of using a rotary cutter comes in handy. Because if you have a rotary cutter, you can just go right along the edge, nice and easy, and trim it up. Normally I leave a little extra here at the turning spot, a little extra of my Easter fabric, but I just went a little crazy and I trimmed everything. If you leave that little bit extra, maybe about a half an inch there, it makes it easier to tuck it in. This is going to be fine. I have a quarter of an inch to tuck it in. It's going to be okay. What I can do is take this over to the iron and just press that little turning spot there, only right where I have that opening. By folding over that seam allowance, when I go to flip it and sew the opening closed, it'll have that already pressed there so I won't have to worry about it. A little tip, can you see these marks here? Do not hit the blue mat with a whole bunch of hot steam. I gave this a quick press with my iron before starting, but I just got a little excited and I pressed it really good and hit it with the steam and that got the thread melting to my iron. So you wanna be careful about that. You can put down a pressing cloth to protect your iron and the pressing station or anything like that so you don't have to worry about it. Now for these corners, just to reduce some of the bulk, I am going to trim the corner. I like to trim it just a little bit away from the thread. Some people like to go right up to the thread. And sometimes I make it to where it goes like this. So I take a little bit of a taper off as I'm going to the corner. And that just reduces that extra bit of bulk when we turn our corners and we try to make everything look nice when we're all done. So we'll do that to all four of them. After that, we just reach our hand in here and we're gonna work our way down to a corner. You can go ahead and pull that out. And eventually we'll have the entire thing turned right side out. Pop out that second corner. You put your opening somewhere towards the middle of the long section. It'll be easy to pop out each side one at a time. Just a little finessing and a little pulling, just don't pull super hard. I do a combination of pulling and pushing with my thumb just to get everything to go through. We don't want to tear our fabric. Then we get to this point, I just keep one hand inside and I'll put my fingers in there. I'll put my thumb down into the corner and I'll put a finger on here so that I can just pop that corner out. Do that with all four. We may not get perfectly crisp corners, but I think with a project like this, it's okay to have them a little rounded. 
There are tools called point turning tools that you can put into the corners to help ease out any extra bulk. I like to use a large K crochet hook. This is one of the metal ones. And then they do have just a, like a plastic point turner. It has a little bit of a point to it. Some people use scissors, but you have to be careful because if they're sharp, you can poke right through your fabric. A chopstick, a wooden chopstick where you break off the tip just so you don't poke through the fabric. So you can just go in. and gently push out any little extra there. Again, you don't want to poke through the fabric. If you do poke through the fabric, turn everything back the way you started when you stitched around it wrong side out, and then you just take a bigger seam allowance right there in that corner where you poke through. So it's not all lost, it's just a little extra work, and you might have a corner that looks a little bit different than the others. So if you have the extra fabric, this is where you wanna go ahead and tuck it in. So I already have mine tucked in. Take this over to the iron, and my goal is to press it so that I see just the one fabric on the top, my fun Easter fabric. Now I do have the fuzzy bits coming over. I'm going to put a pressing cloth on it so that I don't get anything on the good side of my fabric. You can finger press it around like I'm doing. Let me give it a nice good press. Now because of the extra bit of that surged end in there, you see how this kind of wants to be almost a bowl shape, a really little platter. Once we get it all pressed, we're gonna do a stitching around it. And then if it's still a little bit funky like this, then we can go ahead and put some quilting lines in it, just some straight line stitching to hold everything together so it doesn't do this weird thing. We'll talk more about the quilting, about the benefits of it when we get to that section. Gave everything a good press. I just used an old piece of white fabric that I used for a pressing cloth. I laid that on it so when I put my iron down, I didn't have to worry about coming in direct contact with any of the little bits of blue that might be sticking out. You can also turn your iron down to the polyester setting. I have mine on high, high cotton, so that might be part of my problem. Just because this is cotton doesn't mean we should ignore the fact that we have the polyester underneath. The next thing we need to do is to close in our turning hole. For this project, we do have a little benefit because we are using that surged edge as our guideline. I could just fold the blue drying mat at that surge seam, and I have my pressed quarter inch right there, so then I can line them up. I like to use these quilter clips to hold it, mostly because I tend to poke myself with pins, but you can use pins, of course. You can take a little stitch and just close this by hand, but I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and I'm going to do a little bit of a top stitching. And what I wanna do is I just wanna go about an eighth of an inch right along this edge all the way around. And when I come over to this area, I'll just keep stitching and make sure everything is tucked in and then it's all lined up and that's gonna go ahead and close up my opening. Now, if you are smarter than me and you remember to leave that extra bit of fabric there, that'll be tucked in. So then you have a little bit more options. If you prefer, you can follow right along where you can see the surge seam has popped. You can follow right along there and just stitch on there or you can stitch through the whole bit like I am. Because I only have that little quarter inch, I need to make sure that I'm staying within the quarter inch so that the opening gets closed and I don't see any of the raw edges from where I turned it. Now I will backstitch at the beginning, follow it all the way around and backstitch it, stitch at the end just to make it so secure. When I get to the corners, I'll again leave my needle down and then just pivot. Now you can play with your thread choices a little bit. You can use a matching thread. You can just use your universal white thread or you can do some decorative stitching on here to go ahead and close that all up. At this point, that's totally up to you. We just wanna make sure that we close the opening up so that we don't have any issues with it fraying or anything getting in between the two pieces of fabric. Now, since I'm going through several layers here with that folded over seam of the serging and stuff, you might want to lengthen your stitch length a little bit. I want to get to the opening. I just want to go slow and make sure everything is staying lined up. Needle down, press your foot up. So here's my mat, 
all stitched together. You can see where I stitched around. Now again, just to show you some of the issues you might come across when doing things a certain way. I do have this little bit of blue that's sticking out just because of the way I turned it in and how I couldn't get everything stitched under. If you left that extra bit of fabric that I forgot right through there, then you won't have that problem. You'll be able to line everything up neatly and you won't have to worry about getting as close to the edge as you can. So that little bit there won't show up. But it being there is really not that big of a deal. Once you start using it, let me put the eggs the right side. And now I don't even see it when it's down there on the bottom. I can, it's hard to see in the video. You might be able to see how it looks a little uneven. That's because right here, this is not touching the table. So it is sticking up in a couple places. You can try a couple of things. It is foam in there and there we go. See how I got everything to lay down nice and neat just by rolling and squishing, giving it a good press from the top and then you'll be fine. But what if you want to add a few decorative stitches to it? What if you want to make sure that when you put it in the wash that the fabric doesn't do anything weird and it stays? With this being polyester, everything's going to stick really well. But I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to add some straight line stitching. Or maybe your sewing machine has some fun stitches on it, those little fancy stitches we very seldom ever use that you might want to try out. You can go ahead and use them. Now remember, whatever thread you use is going to show up on the back. If that matters to you, you want to use something that's going to match the back of your drawing mat. And then whether or not you want it to be obvious on the front or if you want it to just disappear a little bit. So you can play with the thread colors and you can play with the stitch you use. There it is. I use a serpentine stitch. Now with the light blue thread I use, it just gets sucked right back in here. I can see it, but it's not that it stands out a lot. So maybe if you only make one mat and you use this for the Easter or maybe Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween, whatever holiday, then you can always flip it over and use the regular side for the rest of the year. So that way you only need to make one. So your scrappy word for this video is scissors. I know many of us who craft have a lot of scissors. I could probably count at least 25 scissors that I have in my collection, but how many scissors do you use regularly? Do you have a favorite pair of scissors that you use all the time? I have favorite scissors for a project. I have one that I keep by my sewing machine. I have a couple of good pairs of scissors that I like when I need to cut through a lot of things. And there's always a nice little pair to keep around for doing embroidery and such. So I probably have about seven pairs that I use every day or most days. So that finishes up our drying mats. Whether you want to do the original one where I showed you how to do quilt as you go, you can use your scraps. This is a jelly roll. These were charm squares. You can use one piece of fabric. So if you enjoyed this video or any of the little tips and tricks that I've shown you throughout it, hit the subscribe button so you can see more videos like this. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.